Okay. Once upon a time, I was a decent human being. I was respectful, I was kind, and I had a positive outlook on the world around me. Of course, that didn't last very long and I became the man you see before you. How did that happen, you ask? I'll tell you. I had a series of evil teachers in grade school. I'll admit I was a little bastard at times, but these people had no patience for me. I'd get yelled at constantly for the littlest things. Hey, you spat in the grass? Get the fuck in the corner. If you can't handle children's shenanigans, your ass shouldn't be a teacher. It was that abuse of power that made me resent my superiors when I was young. I'd lay awake at night and wonder what bullshittery the morrow would bring. I wouldn't have turned out so bad if my first dickhead teacher came in like grade 8 or something, but this started young when I was just an innocent little tot. My first three years of grade school were great. JK, SK, and grade 1, I had angels for teachers. But then I guess by the time you're a fully grown 7 year old, it's time to grow the fuck up and take some goddamn responsibility! In grade 2, I met my first evil teacher. I don't know why she didn't like me. Maybe it was because I was always making ridiculous shit up during story time. I once told the whole class that I found a skeleton at the lake and they all believed me. That's a seven year old taking advantage of the gullibility of other seven year olds. I once also blamed a fart on an innocent little girl. We were sitting at the back, I farted, the class looked at us, I looked at her. Sorry, Jacqueline. One time it was teddy bear day and we all got to bring in our favorite bears. How fun. But I was as forgetful then as I am now and forgot my bear at home. I asked the teacher if I could call home and have my mom drop it off. No, you forgot it, that's it! Or something along those lines. Oh, okay. Sorry, kid, fuck you, maybe next teddy bear day. Bitch, this is the only teddy bear day we're gonna have. I then pulled my first sneaky snake move as a student. I asked her if I could go to the washroom and surprisingly enough, she said yes. Dumb bitch. So I ran to the office to use the phone. Why do you need to use the phone, Curtis? It was teddy bear day and I forgot my bear at home. Oh, well, of course, right this way. You know, because the principal was reasonable and sympathized with the small child. And then on my way out, I bumped into the attendance girl. Oh, fuck, fucking fuck, I am fucked! Of course, I didn't use those words as a seven-year-old, but I'm sure those are the emotions that I felt. No, this bitch is gonna rat. I go back to my class, and I sit in my desk, and I wait for it. I know it's gonna happen. I can feel it in my gut. The attendance girl comes back, skimpers over to the teacher's desk, whispers something, and the teacher looks right at me. Ugh. Blah, 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 how dare you, bitch, 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 bitch. That's the kind of woman this was. This other time, the whole class was baking cookies, and it was my responsibility to bring in the raisins. But again, I forgot. But now that it affects everyone, and not just me, that I forgot to bring in the raisins, now it's okay for me to use the phone and call home. Now, while I was calling home, the rest of the class was getting their shit out for science. I got back to the class and now I'm the only one who's not ready. So I start shuffling through my desk, but apparently I'm not looking fast enough for this bitch. And she starts spewing her verbal diarrhea at me again. I don't know if her husband cheated on her or beat her up or her kids moved away, but something was making this woman so cunty that she enjoyed yelling at seven-year-olds. Now I only lived a few minutes away from the school, so it didn't take my mom long to get there. And by the time she's down the hallway, she can hear that someone is getting shat on. And in the name of justice, my teacher grabs my desks and just dumps my shit all over the floor. My mom walks in and sees a pile of papers, books, pencils, pens. It's a mess. And I'm sitting there picking it up. And then my teacher sees her and is a deer in the fucking headlights. We had a blind and deaf kid in our class who had a healthcare provider with him that my mom went to college with. So she was our mole on the inside. Intel says later in the staff room she tried to cover her ass. Oh, that Curtis Petrie is quite the card. Wild card, bitch! My mom goes home crying and starts telling my dad and my opa what happened, and my dad slips into little angry hairy Frenchman mode. That cuck sucking motherfucking cunt licking piece of shit, I'll tell that bitch to her face, you talk to my kid that way! And surprisingly enough, that was the last thing I ever heard in the situation. I don't know nothing about it, I'm not gonna ask any questions, huh? it's got nothing to do with me. Grade 3 was fine, and then I got to grade 4 and met evil teacher number 2. We had this giant behemoth of a teacher. Lanky bastard, but he was tall as fuck, like 6'8 or 6'9 at least. His name was Andre, so we called him Andre the Giant. Oh god, get to be asked to pay me to keep you out of the town, my darling! He was nice. To the girls and the Italians. One time we had this craft to do in French class that involved glue, and I forget what it was exactly, but we have him sitting on our desks when he came back in the class, and he looks around, he's not too pleased, and he asks, do you have to have those things on your desk? The class told him yes, and I said to him, nice try, sir. That's not so bad, is it? I wasn't trying to be rude, I was just trying to share a laugh with the guy. He pulls me out in the hall, and I mean literally, pulls me out in the hall. He had these two bony-ass fingers, and he liked to dig them into your neck. Mr. Petrie. Ah! 
He leans into me and says, I am not your buddy. Well, fuck me for trying to get along with my superiors. And now that you've made it perfectly clear that we are in fact not buddies, I'm gonna be a little ass to you for the rest of the year. Teachers may have known little shits, but I was the shittiest little shit in the shit field. Shit was my business. Shit was my art. And I was gonna flow a river of shit all over this motherfucker. So that's essentially how the rest of grade four went. Fuck you, no fuck you, no fuck you, no fuck you, no fuck you. Suffice it to say I had a nice pile of detention slips to wipe my ass with by the end of the year. Grade five was good, and then we had this really strict teacher in grade six. He wasn't mean or anything, he just didn't take any of our shit. And he hated when you would speak out in class. Shut your mouth! That or he'd give you the dictionary definition of talk to write out five times. And this guy was the easiest teacher too. For history class, he'd just hand out a couple photocopied sheets of articles and have us highlight points. Highlight two points on the Red River Rebellion. Two points on Samuel de Champlain. Two points on the Métis tribe. Two points on Henry LaSalle. Two points on Louis Riel. And two points on the Hudson Bay Company. Okay, so I'll highlight the first and last sentence of each paragraph and I'm done. That was our homework. We used to play DX Ball on his computer, which was basically Brick Breaker, but you could make your own levels. And one time I made a level that just said, fuck you in big brick letters. So one day in class, we're sitting there silently, blindly highlighting points on the fucking fur trade, and all we hear is, Aye! We weren't allowed on his computer after that. One time me and this girl drew a big exaggerated picture of him. He was fat with warts and a cross eye, and just for shits and giggles, I drew an erection on him. And then she gets caught with the picture! Booyah! Sorry, Jacqueline. He also liked to leave the classroom to smoke a cigarette from time to time, hour to hour. A friend and I actually kept track of how many times he left the classroom during the last two months of school. It came to something ridiculous, like 375. No lie. Although in his defense, it was a bit unfair because he helped organize the track meet, so we did a lot of running back and forth to the office. So at the end of the year, I gave him the piece of paper that we were keeping tabs on him on, and I told him it was something to improve on for next year. I don't know how he reacted because I turned around right away and left before he tore my fucking throat out. He was a funny guy to mess with, but an all-around good guy. So fate decided that since my grade 6 teacher wasn't necessarily evil, my grade 7 one would be quite evil. I don't know why, but we just did not get along and butted heads every chance we got. It was a rush for me to argue with this guy, and I was about 12 years old, so I'm in like prime little shit mode. And this carried out into grade 8 because he was our history teacher. One time we were in his classroom doing some sort of craft that required cutting construction paper. And when I was done, I put all of my scrap paper in his recycle bin, and I went back to my class. Later in the day, he comes walking into our classroom with a bunch of scrap paper in his hand, points me out. You put your recycle in your recycle bin! Well, so this is what we're arguing over today. And I thought I was the child in this situation. So I'm yelling at him, and he's yelling at me, and even my teacher is speechless. And then he says to me, you do not cross my threshold again! Threshold? Just call it a door, man. I don't know this word yet. He probably walked back to his classroom with a big dumb smile on his face. Threshold, I showed him. But then that went in my favor because we had these church ladies that came in once a week to do the rosary in his classroom. But I wasn't allowed in. I got to sit in the hall and listen to my music. Eminem is appropriate to play outside the doors of a religion class, right? We had a field trip once to a hockey arena to skate in a circle for a couple hours. These were the carefully organized field trips that were planned for us. I don't know, just have him skate shit. We're loading the bus and I'm sitting at the back with my cousin and he decides to give me a horse bite. Now a horse bite is when you claw your hand up like this and you fucking take a chunk out of their inner thigh. His big brother used to crush his balls and do a bunch of mean shit to him at home so then he came to school and did mean shit to us. I don't know if you ever had a horse bite before but those shits hurt. I lost it and for me at that point the only logical thing for me to do in my head was scream FUCKER! Teacher gets up, that's it, off the bus. I kind of lean back when I say his voice because he had bad knees and walked like Cotton Hill. He takes me to the principal's office, and the principal, with a brain, says, Why did you swear? Oh, now it's an investigation! We're getting down to it! Brendan gave me a horse bite. The principal asks the teacher, Well, where's Brendan? And the teacher's standing there like, <laughs> So the principal goes to get Brendan at the hockey arena, and on the way back, apparently gave him a good talking to. Brendan, you can't be fucking giving people horse bites! As punishment, we had to clean the storage room, but we were unsupervised, so it became sit in the storage room. We started snooping around and found old pictures of teachers when they were like skinny and young and actually had hair. This shit is the field trip, I don't even want to go skating. I eventually got my revenge on this evil teacher by sneaking into his classroom the summer after I graduated and peeing on his chair. <laughs> I win. I hope 
a lot of teachers see this video because you guys are the ones who mold students when they're young and impressionable. If I didn't have those evil teachers, I'd probably be a good student today. They forged me as a shit disturber through their fuckery. I know now that it's a game of respect. I always expected it to come my way first, but that's just not how it works. And that's what I tell kids. You gotta put it out to get it back, but kids don't know that when they're young. They know the teacher is the boss, but they expect to be treated decently. All it takes is one fuckhead on a power trip to completely turn kids off to teachers. That's what happened to me, and that's why I don't give two shits today. And that's not gonna change. It's too late. I am now a grown man whose art is crafted through arguing with teachers. Look at my YouTube channel, it's all based on shit talking, how do you think I got like that? Well that's enough for now. If you're not subscribed now, subscribe and join my army of fuckers. I made a Facebook page you can like and a Twitter you can follow, it's all so nice to fucking do it! My stage manager, Kyle Petrie everyone. Thank you.